the message this evening. Brethren, the hour is come. I was looking at the word uh, from Jesus and in his ministry from the moment he, be he began his ministry, he keep on using this word, uh, the hour is come. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I was looking at even John alone, and he uses these words over six times. But you know, sometimes we read and we jump over little words that mean so much because the person who is speaking is Jesus and he kept on using this word, the hour have come or the hour have not yet come. Many times he said it, my hour is not yet come. But this time, he was praying to the Father in St. John's 17, and he speak it differently. All the time you look, he's saying that his hour is not yet come. But look at what he said in St. John 17 and verse 1. And Sister Gif going to read for us. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus mm -hmm. and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Oh, hallelujah. What is he really saying to his father? What does he mean by this? Because all over the scripture you find it. But he's saying today to his father, and this St. John 17 is a prayer to the father. And this is how he began the prayer. The hour is come. I'm, I'm wondering when I was reading the scripture, what does this mean? What, what was he telling the father? What was he pointing to? Because all the time he was saying, the hour have not yet come. But this time he's saying the hour have come. He told the lady when the lady asked him certain question, he said to her, the hour is not yet come. But in St. John, in at this time, he's saying the hour is here. That's one thing. And something that, that catch my eyes, look what he said again in the same verse. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus mm -hmm. and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, mm -hmm. the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. What is he asking for? He's saying to his father, look, the hour is come. And the hour is come that you should glorify me, your son. What is he telling us? 
And he went down to say, if you glorify me, I would glorify you. What, what is he really getting at? What is he telling his father? He's telling his father the hour has come. And he want his father to glorify him. Two things. I'm sure that we read St. John's 1 and verse 17, and we have just run over it. So two things he's saying. The hour is come, and he's saying to his father, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. And if you go down and down into the scripture, which we will come back to, we would try to see what he's saying, but he did not reveal what he was asking for. The time have come. What this time mean? What does this time mean to Jesus? And what does this glory mean to Jesus? And you could see from the reading, it was important to Jesus, the time and the hour. The glory, it was important to Jesus. But let's see if we can if we can look to see what he's speaking of. Let's see if the Bible would give us some more on what Jesus is speaking of. Let's go to St. John's 12, verse 23 and 24. St. John's 12, 23 and 24. Let's see if we can get some revelation about time and glory. John right. chapter 12, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, say, the hour is come. Watch at him again. Watch at him again. Watch, watch at him again. He is not saying yet. The hour have not come as yet. He's saying here that the hour is here right now. Read again, Sister Gift. John chapter 12, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come mm -hmm. that the Son of Man should be glorified. So look at him again. He's saying now the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. What is he speaking of? In St. John 17, we did not have a full explanation of what he was pushing at. He was pushing at a certain time and he was pushing for his glory, for the Father to glorify him. I wonder what, I wonder what he was looking for. I wonder what is going to happen in this time, what meanest this time? What is going to happen in this time? Let's go over it again. John chapter 12, verse 23. And Jesus answered them, say, mm -hmm. The hour is come mm -hmm. that the Son of Man should be glorified. So he's saying, this is my time. This is my time to be glorified. To be lifted up. This is my time that you have to show off with me that I am your son. You have to lift me up, Father. You have to glorify me. You have to make me feel like someone. That is what he's asking for. So let's go to 24. To but, see if we can get some more explanation here. But the hour is come for that to happen. John chapter 12 verse 24. Mm -hmm. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. What is he getting at? He was just speaking about the hour. He was just speaking of his, he want back his glory. But now he's saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn or the wheat fall on the ground and die. Let's see what he's going at. Let's see. You know, Jesus have a way of taking his time. And sometimes he tires us up. Sometimes he hides what he's saying from us. But let's see if we can break through this secret. What is he talking about? Our? What is he talking about? Glory. Go ahead, Sister Gift. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. except a corn of wheat fall into the ground mm -hmm. and die, mm -hmm. it abideth alone. Mm -hmm. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. You see? What is the explanation there? What is he saying to us? Can the ordinary man understand what he's saying? I would say no. But let's see if we could put our spiritual eyes and mind into this and see if we can find the keys to open up these doors to see what he's speaking of. So I'm going to bring back Sister Gift again to 23 and 24. And then we're going to start, we're going to try and start seeing if we can unfold what he's saying because he's speaking in parables or in mysteries of the hour and his glory. So let's go back to the gift. Take your time John, this time. John chapter 12, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come mm -hmm. that the Son of Man should be glorified. So you're seeing he's speaking of himself here. He's saying the time is right here that the Son of Man would be glorified or lifted up. All right? So let me get that straight. Let's go to verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. So let's stay right there. So now, look at what Jesus done. Jesus put himself as the corn, or is symbolizing himself as the corn. So he's saying, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, he's speaking of himself. Why did he put himself here? Why is he speaking of death when is he when is he speaking of glory? He's, he's saying here, except I die, read this to give it. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. So he's speaking of himself. He's saying, except no, I die. Go ahead. It abideth alone. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The corn have to die. Go ahead. But if it die. Mm -hmm. Watch at him now. Watch at him now. He's saying, I have to die. I have to die. This is what he's saying here in this verse 24. He's saying in 24, look, I am the corn and I have to die. Go ahead, Sister Gift. But if it die. It bringeth forth much fruit. So he's saying, if he die, he, Jesus, with, after his resurrection, he is going to bring forth much fruit. I wonder if you're here with me. Look at where we are. 
This, when he was speaking here, he was in Jerusalem. And he had only 12 men and some other people around him. But after his resurrection, the gospel has traveled throughout the world. That it meet us in the Caribbean. It reach us in the Americas. So let's just go over the 24th verse again. Because I don't want you to miss it. Because we, he's talking here about time and glory. But he's not, he's not telling us, he's not telling us plainly. So let's go back one more time. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. So as I said before, Jesus now symbolizes himself as the corn. And the corn must fall into the ground. Did he? Did, he, did, did they kill him? Did they bury him? This is the symbolization of what Jesus is saying. He put himself as the corn. Where it says to give. It abideth alone. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Hallelujah. So again, as I said to you, Jesus died, and with his death, the church blossomed. But what does this have to do with time and glory? What does this have? We are trying, we are kind of exposing what he is saying, but we want to get the whole message of time and glory. So we're going to go to Mark, Mark 15, 32. Mark chapter 15, verse 32. Watch it in here. Watch it in. Watch it in. Watch how he's exposing. Watch how he's unfolding himself here now. Watch it in. Mark chapter 15, verse 32. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross. Mm hmm that's that, what they're saying. That's what they were saying once he was on the cross. That we may see and believe. So they're saying, if you want us to believe, come down from the cross. We, the soul, they put you up there. We, Jerusalem, put you up there. Look at verse 33. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, mm -hmm. that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. So you see, they took away his glory. They paint him different. So this is why he was asking his father for his glory. Remember when he was in heaven, he had, the, he had glory. He was sitting at the right hand of the father. But when he came on earth, he came as a man, flesh and blood. They call him a wine bibber. They call him all sorts of name. So he did not have no glory. They mock him. They think he was born out, out of wedlock. So he lost his glory on earth. But he, he he's asking his father, Back. He's telling his father, Father, the time you have promised me, when this time come, you're going to give me my glory. So we are going to the time. Go ahead. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when the sixth hour was come. Watch at it, you know. Watch at it. Watch at it. Go ahead. There was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Put your mind here with me. And as we go down, we are going to see how Jesus is going to get back his glory. Could you imagine that Jesus on the cross and this is happening 
And man start fearing and said, boy, this is a crisis you now. What we did, what, do, what did we do? Let's read it again. The sixth hour. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour mm -hmm. was come, mm -hmm. there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Could you imagine this? 12 noon in the day that the place becomes dark. So you could imagine man's heart failing them for fear. Let's go to my little Moses again. 12 noon. And watch at the time, the sixth hour, which is 12 o'clock in the day. Go ahead. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Oh, hallelujah. So from, from, from 12 to 3, there was total darkness. Total darkness. I want you to imagine how men heart was failing for fear. I want you to imagine that they were not saying it openly, but they were saying that this has to be the Christ. Let's go down a little bit. So, so, so from, from 12 to 3, darkness upon the earth. Mark chapter 15, verse 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Oh, saying, hallelujah. Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. Mm -hmm. Which is being interpreted, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, hallelujah. That's just how he felt at the sixth hour, around three o'clock in the, at the ninth hour, around three o'clock in the afternoon. But I don't want you to get away from the feelings of the people that were there. All the glory, all the rejoicing, I can imagine man had no, it's failing them for fear. The place get dark. It's not supposed to happen. Jesus stopped according to him the hour of come when he was asking his father for his glory. So here are they now because the place get dark and they were afraid in their heart and in their mind, they were saying, we killed the wrong man. Let's go down a little bit. Mark chapter 15, verse 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, mm -hmm. saying, Eli, Eli, laba sabachthani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So you see, I, 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 he was asking for his glory. So he, he was on earth here without his glory. His father had forsaken him. Remember when they caught him that night, before they catch him, he asked the father to look. Let's forget about this thing. Let's forget about it. Because he, he felt that he was nothing. He was just another human. He lost his glory. But let's go down. Mark chapter 15, verse 35. And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he calleth Elias. Go ahead with 35 again. Sorry. And some of them that stood by, 
when they heard it, said, Behold, he called it Elias. So you look, look at the fear. They are not just saying this because they are happy. When Jesus said what he had said, they did not understand the Hebrew language or what language he was speaking so they know that Jesus was calling for help. So they, get, they, they, they was afraid. And look what they did. Mark chapter 15, verse 36. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar mm -hmm. and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. So look, 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 look what the fear is doing here. The fear is filling his mouth with vinegar that he shouldn't speak. Are you here with me? I want you to I want to bring you into this. The fear is making him not speak. So they fill his mouth with vinegar. But this cannot stop the glory. The time has come for Jesus to get back his glory. And it's true this death and resurrection, his glory is going to come. Let's go down. Mark chapter 15, verse 36. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, mm -hmm. saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. So you see what they're saying, let us alone. And we want to see if Elijah is going, they, they had respect Elijah, the Jews had totally respect Elijah. Elijah was not, not an easy man. So they don't want Elijah to come. So they are, they are begging him now not to call for Elijah by putting vinegar in his mouth. Go ahead, Sister Keith. Mark chapter 15, verse 37. Mm -hmm. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. So you see the time that he gave up the, 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 the ghost? The ninth hour, which is three o'clock. The ninth hour, which is three o'clock. And remember, he's asking in sin, he's telling his father in St. John the time have come. This is the mystery. This whole thing is a mystery that the Holy Spirit has to reveal to us. So let's go down a little bit more. Mark chapter 15, verse 38. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. You think you understand what's going on here? From 12 to 3, the place was dark. Man had sat fearing, failing them for fear. After he gave up the ghost, peace of the temple just tear in two. Peace of the temple just rent. They call it the veil. This ripped. All this looks impossible to man now. Man had feeling more for fear. Oh, hallelujah. It's like, it's like you stand up there and there was hardly any women and your house stopped just blow off. A piece of your house just, just gone. You are going to stay there and you are going to wonder what happened. And this was the case here the veil of the temple rented. I don't know what percentage 
was the veil. But it has to be a great peace. So look at what's happening you now. All of this is happening. Jesus dead. The hour is come. And many saying, he has to be the Christ. Look what just happened. The hour is come that Jesus has to get back his glory. But let's go down a little more. Mark chapter 15, verse 39. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the son of God. What did I tell you? He's a Roman soldier. What did I say to you? Jesus at the ninth hour start getting back his glory. They now realize that, listen, they killed the wrong man. This is the Christ. Let me give you more shock. Let's jump over to 42. Mark chapter 15, verse 42. And now when the even was come, mm -hmm. because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, mm -hmm. Joseph of Amirata, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Go ahead. Jesus. Look at this, 44. Verse 44. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. You see, the thieves on the cross didn't die yet. But the hour has came. This is the hour Jesus was talking about. That even Pilate, a Roman, was surprised that the man died already. You could imagine how he was swinging in his chair and saying, I never see this happen. In so and so amount of hours, this man just dead. Let's see what he said for the fog again. Mark chapter 15, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. Mm -hmm. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been. The man was so surprised when Joseph went in and asked the body and told him Jesus died, that now he has to call one of his soldiers to ask the same question. Jesus surprised everybody. His glory is coming back to him. Let's go down a little bit. Mark chapter 15, verse 45. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Go ahead. Verse, Mark chapter 15, verse 46. And he bought fine linen mm -hmm. and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewed out of a rock and rolled a stone onto the door of the sepulchre. So he died. And there is where his glory is going to start coming. Let's go to, to Matthew 27 and verse 50. Look at what happened here in Matthew 27. We are talking about the time. Jesus is saying, the time have come. And what was that time? We already passed that. And Jesus is saying to his father, he wants back his glory. And I was trying to show you 
at the death of Jesus, the temple rented. This happened and people start getting afraid and said, this is the son of man. But look what happened here in Matthew 27 and verse 50. Look at more shocking news here. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So he died at a certain hour. At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus died because that he said in St. John's 17 and verse 1, the time have come. So the time have come. And he said the time, he keep on saying it in the scriptures, but we never look at it, how this time was important. The time was important because he won back his glory. He was tired here in this flesh and blood. He was really tired. Let's go down. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent mm -hmm. in twain from the top to the bottom. So you see what happened here? John said it. Matthew now is confirming it. It just didn't hang. But this is happening for the glory, for his glory, for them to know that, listen, this man that you abuse from so many years, you're calling so many names that he is the Christ. So God is saying here, this is my beloved son. Yeah, yeah, man. So in verse 50, he gave up the ghost. In verse 51, go ahead. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. From Split the in two. So just, just imagine this big temple that David built piece of it just ripped off. Remember, from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, it was dark. Don't you think that mankind mind would be start thinking, what have we do? This has to be the Christ. Look what happened to our temple. Their minds start reflecting on what they have done. Not because the scripture here didn't tell you that. From the moment the place get dark, man had start failing for fear. Look what that happened here now. The temple rent. Matthew chapter 27 verse 51. And behold... The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. My God. So here is Jesus on the cross hanging. Or maybe done. And under your feet. You can feel the earth moving. You can feel the earth want start want swallowing you up. Are you going to tell me that you would not be afraid? Are you going to tell me that you you're not going to say in your heart that this was the Christ that we abuse? the Son of God. So in this, Jesus start getting back even when he was dead. He resurrected, you know. After the resurrection is where the glory come. That 
after the resurrection, when he was ascended to the Father. We're going to get to that some other time. So here is Jesus. Here is God rocking the earth for them to know that this is the Son of God. Look at 52. Matthew chapter 52 is a verse that nobody speaks of. But all of this is that for Jesus to have his glory. What's it, 52? Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. Mm -hmm. And the graves were opened. Mm -hmm. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. My God. Do you see what's happening here? Do you see the trouble that Jerusalem have put themselves in? That man that was dead is now ascended, is now back to life. Oh, hallelujah. You call this the first fruits. Oh, hallelujah. They troubled God. They troubled Jesus. Now, God is rocking the earth and man is coming up from the tomb. Man that was dead is alive. I want you to think. I want myself to think. Could you imagine the fear that Jerusalem had on that day? Could you imagine the fear that came up on Jerusalem when they see dead man walking on the street? Could you imagine that they're saying that this really is the Son of God? Jesus said, the time has come. And he's telling his father, he want back his glory. Look at how he's getting back his glory. Say upon man. And they are whispering one to another, what have we done? This is not Brother Joe that dead 10 years ago. This is not Sister Mitchell that died 20 years ago. How she come up from the grave. All of this have been shot to Jerusalem and Jesus now begins to get back his glory. Let's go down a little more. Let's read it again and go down a little more. Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. And the graves were opened, mm -hmm. and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Verse 53. And came out of the graves mm -hmm. after his resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. And this happened after Jesus was risen bring more fear upon them. The man is risen and he raised dead people. So are they not questioning Jerusalem now? What have we done? We have troubled God. We have interfered with God. And now God is giving the glory to his son. He was tired here. He wants to go back to heaven. He wants to get back his glory. He wants to take off the body that he was in. And now, look at what happened. 30, 53 again. Matthew chapter 27, verse 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto to many. That is dead men. They appeared unto many to bring fear upon man. 
for Jesus to for the scripture here in St. John's 1 to fulfill the time have come that I want back my glory. God bless you in Jesus' name.